Okay, Mr. Chairman, we're ready. All right, thank you. Um, I'd like to call the Tuesday, July 16, 2019 Committee of the Whole to order. Um, Mr. Clerk, will you please take roll? Alderman Red Path. Here. Alderwoman Simpson. Here. Alderwoman Turner. Here. Alderman Fulgenzi. Here. Alderman Proctor. Here. Alderwoman DeCenso. Present. Alderman McMenamin. Here. Alderwoman Connolly. Present. Alderman Donnellan. Here. Alderman Hanauer. Here. Mr. Chairman, a quorum is present. Thank you. I'd accept a motion for approval of the June 25th, 2019 committee minute. Second. second. Okay. Got a minute, uh, motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Madam Treasurer, uh, tr for Treasurer's report. Thank you, Chair Hanauer. The corporate fund in the month of June had a beginning balance of $7,204,115. We took in total receipts of $18,855,266. We had total disbursements of $19,090,090, which left the corporate fund with an ending balance of $6,969,291. Um, the reason the receipts and the disbursements are much higher this month is because the uh, county property taxes came in for the first installment, and then they were paid out to the police and fire pension funds that came in. Thank you, Chair Hanauer. Thank you. Um, are there any questions on the OBM contract report? Huh? All right. Are there any presentations? I don't believe. No. Yeah, okay. Uh, next ordinance is tabled or remaining in committee. Mr. Clerk, please read those. 2017-103. 2018 110, 2018 545, 2019 008, 2019 232, 2019 275, 2019 276. Would anybody like to take, uh, take any action on those? Okay. Um, I would uh, ask for a motion to, uh, to move um, 2019 328. Um, for the appointment of Peggy Dyson. She's here. She's been waiting a long time. Um, get a motion for that? I'll make Good. a motion. To have that Second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Clerk, could you read, read that, please? Yes. 2019-328, an ordinance approving the appointment of Peggy Dyson to the Springfield Disabilities Commission. Second. A motion and a second for debate. Any discussion? Ms. Dyson, would you like to would you like to come up and say anything, or have you heard enough tonight? <laughs> I just wanted to say it's an honor uh, for me to be on this committee and just to uh, serve the individuals who are blind and visually impaired. The Educational Center for the Visually Impaired is a new not-for-profit organization, and we're just excited to be involved with the city and helping make decisions. Thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. um, Chairman, 2019-324 um, through 2019-329 are all appointments. Can we dispense with all of those in one vote now? If you want to make the motion, Second. omnibus. <laughs> Okay, we've got 320. For debate, correct? Yes. For debate. We've got a motion, a second. Any discussion? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, Mr. Clerk. 2019-324, an owner's approving the reappointment of Jasmine L. Wufolk to the Police that, Community man. Review Commission. 2019-325, an ordinance approving the appointment of Cynthia J. Petherma Petra Ram, AIA, to the Springfield Electrical Commission. 2019-326, an ordinance approving the reappointment of Marcus Lucas to the Police Community Re Review Commission. 2019-327, an ordinance approving the reappointment of Don R. Walton to the Springfield Historic Sites Commission. 2019-329, an ordinance appointing Nathan R. Fritz to the Springfield Economic Development Commission. Okay, we've got, uh, we've got a motion and a second for debate. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 
CWLP 2019-302, an ordinance accepting bids and authorizing contract UE20-05-27, Dell SQL and Exchange Servers with Matrix Systems Group Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $191,799.52 for the Office of Public Utilities. Consent. Second. second. We've got a motion and a second for consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I just have it. 2019-303, an ordinance authorizing accepting a letter of extension for one year for the purchase of chemicals for mercury oxidation, capture and removal at Dolman and Nalco Company, LLC, and authorizing additional funding in an amount not to exceed $1,700,000 for a total amount not to exceed $7,978,600 for the Office of Public Utilities. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Um, for consent. Got a motion and a second for consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. 2019-304, an ordinance authorizing payment of $199,200 over a three-year period for the utilities electric funds share of redem re remediation costs incurred by U.S. EPA claim number 17-CV-03168 from the Environmental and Regulatory Initiatives and Rebate Fund, ERIRF, to the Self-Insurance Fund for the Office of Public Utilities. Do I have a motion? Motion for consent. Second. Do I have a motion and a second for consent? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Eyes have it. Public Safety, 2019-305, an ordinance authorizing the purchase of two 2019 Ford F-150 crew cab 4x4 pickup trucks from Morrow Brothers Ford Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $83,480,000 under state contract number PSD 4018488 slash P-426 for the Springfield Fire Department. Motion and consent. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. 2019-306, an ordinance accepting the bid and authorizing execution of contract number PD, PD, PD 20-04-21 with Kessler Police Supply Incorporated for the purchase of ballistic helmets and vests for an amount not to exceed $102,131.50 for the Springfield Police Department. Motion Motion consent. Consent. Second. Second. A motion and second for consent. Any discussion? A discussion. Uh, Tim Griffin, could you find, I don't see anyone here um, from management from uh, the police department. Could you find out, Tim, how many ballistic helmets we're receiving and vests. I didn't see that anywhere in the materials. Hold on, I believe the chief is here. We're discussing 2019-306, the ballistic helmets. Yes, Just, we need a quantity of ballistic helmets and vests that we're receiving for the um, the amount that we're spending, $102,000? It's one for every officer in the department. So that'd be a roughly 240? 250 people. 250, thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 2019-307, an ordinance authorizing acceptance and execution of grant number 1565-15489 in the amount of $13,310 from the Illinois Department of Human Services Division of Substance Use Prevention and Recovery for the Kids Can't Buy Him Here program and authorizing supplemental appropriation of said grant funds in the amount of $8,873 for FY20 for the Springfield Police Department. Motion for consent. Second. Got a motion and a second for consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Public Works, 2019-308, an ordinance authorizing a supplemental appropriation in an amount of $440,000 from unappropriated fund balance for the Office of Public Works. With the consent. Motion consent. Second. Got a motion and a second for consent. Any discussion? Uh, possibly discussion. Um, we need an explanation of... Never mind. I think this is where this is a um, unappropriated fund balance because we're going to spend down some of the new revenue that we're receiving from the monthly um, environmental recycling fee. Is that correct? Yes. 
this is necessary in order to pay for the enhanced or increased Evans contract. And, and what fund are we using to pay the Evans contract? The Waste and Recycling Fund, Fund 49. And that's the, the, the um, fund that we have additional revenue going into? Yes, it is. Okay. And I'll reserve the rest of my questions when we get to the next ordinance. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 2019-309, an ordinance authorizing contract number PW 20-06 with Rex D. Evans doing business as Evans Carthage for 2019 branch and yard waste disposal services for an total amount not to exceed $720,000 from July 1st, 2019 through March 31st, 2020 for the Office of Public Works. Motion for consent. Second. A motion and a second for consent. Any discussion? Uh, uh, discussion. As I recall, this is um, a renegotiated contract with Evans, and the um, amount of the con contract price is significantly increasing. I'm trying to see what it was the previous year. I think it was 440000 Is that correct? 331. 331. So we're going from 331 to 720. And I understand that the numbers uh, were apparently increasing the amount of waste going to the uh, Evans site because we've got um, a, a more popular program to pick up the yard waste throughout our city, and that's creating more waste being taken to Evans. We're a kind of a captured market with Evans. I don't know that we have anyone else that could provide these services. Is that correct, Nate? That we have no other, currently no other. Um, we don't have any licensed facilities at this time. That is correct. However, um, going forward next year, we'll start the process a lot earlier and, and assess that. Do you see any other potential bidders for the contract going forward? I believe um, if we put it out a lot earlier and give people a chance um, to get the proper permits needed that uh, we can have more bidders uh, with future programs. I think that'll be real important because we're, you know, facing basically, we're captive. Um, we've got no, no, no other place to take all this waste at the present time. I remember back when the city had its own site, and I'm not saying going back to that, but we, we need some competition to make sure that we have no way to... Um, adjust the charge that might be given to us. Okay, that's, that's so far on that. Now, the other part of this, Nate, are there any substantial changes to the contract? Through this year, through June 30th, our city employees were able to take unlimited amount of, or could take branches to the site without a charge. Does that continue? That's correct. That, that's outstanding. And then if you take bags out there, does that charge remain the same as what it has been? That's correct. It's a, a dollar in the off-peak off times, and then it's free drop-off during the spring and fall portions. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, Director. You're welcome. Mayor? Uh, just some information. We did uh, ask for a request for information from Republic, and they said, well, we may be able to do something, but as uh, Interim Director Bottom said, uh, there's no guarantees they'd have to get a license and that's the that takes months uh, so um, and so what you're dealing with is a variable that may or may not come to fruition and that's why we brought this forward uh, so you know they on the yard waste side I think it was like 300 some thousand but Rex Evans is here he can come up and tell you what it's cost him as an operator and it's uh, the uh, doubling up effect I think each alderman understands that because you're getting the calls about pickup, mm -hmm. uh, how it's been a lot higher amount of pickup than we, we anticipated, and the dumping ground's been on Evans. And I'd like them to come up and uh, you know just uh, talk about the challenges, if you would, and uh, speak to the, um, the limb disposal and everything else that you'd like to. Well, what a lot of it is is you know, all the ash trees that you guys are hauling into us. I mean, we're just getting a constant flow of your tandems and your grapple trucks coming in, hauling all the ash trees in. 
the volumes of the wood products has doubled. I don't know, you know, you've got the free pickup going on right now, but the people still, they don't want to wait two weeks. That's just kind of the bottom line of the thing. They, they want to get rid of this stuff, and they're all the time wanting to come in and, and order up for us to do it. Fuel prices, they're adding the fuel cert or taxes on there. The wages are going up. We're just getting hard, hit hard. They put the tariffs on the metal, which anything as far as maintenance on our grinder has just about doubled just because of the tariffs that they put on the metal products and our tips and our bolts and everything that we wear out just on a daily basis and the screens have just gone out of this world. We just, well, just on one of the maintenance items, our motor went down is 103,000 to overhaul the motor on that grinder. And for me to be able to take on prices like that, I got to do something a little bit different or it's not going the right direction for us. That's just bottom line. But there, there's a lot of stuff out there, you know, we kind of put a price sheet together. Uh, just my costs, if we run all day long out there, which I put a fuel and labor cost together, if we run a 10 hour day out there, we're looking at about $9,000 for one day just to dispose of what you guys bring in. And I, like I told uh, Mayor Langfelder, we need a couple of days the other direction to kind of offset this or we're still not doing what we need to do to maintain our head above water on this thing just because of the volumes that you've got coming in out there it's you know my guys even said you know they've never seen so much material come in it's just a constant flow to what it used to be and the city residents i mean we had a group of them come in today and always on mondays and tuesdays it seems like we get blasted from the city residents out there from what they cleaned up over the weekend so but uh like for our our fuel and labor costs for one day out there and this doesn't include the maintenance the repairs the license insurance work comp the utilities but just for one day out there comes up to nine thousand six hundred and sixty nine thousand sixty seven dollars and you don't have to run too many days like that in the month to make up for what we're asking for. So I don't know if you got any questions or anything on this, but like I say, we kind of broke it all down on a paper here and uh, took some pictures. We got a, right now we got a mulch pile out there that I think you could fill up, put a football field and couldn't find the football field. Mm -hmm. And that's Any questions from Mr. Evans? Well, I can confirm. I go by your site at least once a week, and sometimes enter the site, and I've never seen it. I've never seen a mountain so tall and occupying so much of your acreage as what you have this year. So, I can see the increase in volume. It's visible. The increase in volume is 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 visible. It's it's given us a workout. It's absolutely <laughs> given us a workout. Any other questions? Thank you, I would uh, encourage any alderman to go out there because it is, uh, you know, and take a look at the operations. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty significant. Thank and you for one do. thing about it, it just doesn't end there. You got to have a place to go with all this stuff to where we got to load it on trucks, take it out the farm fields and spread it on the farm fields out there. So it just doesn't stop with that location right there. So anyway. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. 2019-310, an ordinance authorizing purchase of John Deere 410L backhoe under contract PW 20-04-14 with Martin Equipment of Illinois for an amount not to exceed $97,900 for the Office of Public Works. Move to consent. Second. second. <coughs> Motion a second for consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 2019-311, an ordinance authorizing purchase of a John Deere 
544K2 wheel loader under contract PW20-04-14 with Martin Equipment of Illinois for an amount not to exceed $128,740 for the Office of Public Works. Move to consent. Second. second. You got a motion second for consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Eyes have it. 2019-312, an ordinance authorizing purchase of a salt conveyor and hopper under contract PW20-05-24 with Kimco USA Incorporated for an amount not to exceed $56,413 for the Office of Public Works. With consent. Second. second. We've got a motion and second for consent. Any discussion? All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Eyes have it. Um, the next one, 2009-313, I've been asked to withdraw that. Two tandem, three, uh, three with 313. 313. 313. 2019-314, a resolution for a temporary closure of a portion of Illinois State Routes 97 and 125 Jefferson Street for an annual Trades and Labor Council Labor Day Parade to be held on September 2nd, 2019 for the Office of Public Works. Move to consent. Second. Second. We've got a motion and second for consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. 2019-315. A resolution requesting temporary closure of a portion of Illinois State Route 97, Jefferson Street, from 5th Street to 9th Streets for the annual Christmas parade on December 7, 2019, for the Office of Public Works. With the consent. Second. Second. Got a motion, second for consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. 2019-316, ordinance authorizing a contract with Sangamon County as trustee for purchase of real estate listed on Sangamon County's delinquent tax register and located at 927 North 10th Street, 2012 East South Grand Avenue, and 2004 East South Grand Avenue for the Office of Public Works. Is there a motion? Motion for consent. Second. Got a motion and second for consent. Any discussion? Any discussion, Mr. Chair? Are these purchases for future use by the city or are these purchases to make sale to the public? Um, these will be utilized for the Springfield Rail Improvements Project. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 2019-317, a resolution notifying the State of Illinois Department of Transportation that motor fuel tax funds in an amount of $38,293.84 may be used for the city's share for planning work outlined in the technical work program as required by the 1962 Federal and Highway Acts STATS, or SATS, Springfield Area Transportation Study, MFT Section 19-00300-00-ES, as amended for the Office of Public Works. Motion for consent. Second. Got a motion and second for consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. 2019-318, an ordinance authorizing execution of an agreement with the springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Commission for the performance of transportation work under the... Unified Planning Work Program from July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020 in an amount not to exceed $38,293.84 MFT section number 19-00300-00-ES for the Office of Public Works. Move to consent. Second. A motion and second for consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. 2019-319, an ordinance annexing certain Describe real property located at 2320 East Lake Shore Drive. Move to debate. Consent. Second. Motion and second for consent. Any discussion? Debate. debate. For debate. Debate. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I heard. Con oh. Motion for debate. Second. second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. 2019-320, an ordinance accepting the lowest responsible bid and authorizing the execution of contract number PW20-05-32 with PH Broughton and Sons Incorporated for the FY 2020 seal coat overlay program in an amount not to exceed $447,175 for the Office of Public Works and Public Utilities. Move consent. Second. Motion and second for consent. Any discussion? Discussion, Mr. Chair. Nate, question. Is this um, program to chip and oil the roads, or is this to seal asphalt overlay? It's oil and chip the roads. Okay. Do you have a list of uh, streets to be chipped and oiled? Uh, David Whitworth's working on the list. I'll get it to you, though. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Can you make sure we all get it? Yep. Yes, please. Definitely. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. <coughs> Finance, 2019-321, an ordinance authorizing payment of $10,000 to the Illinois Department of Agriculture for advertising and marketing during the Illinois State Fair for the Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau. With consent. Move consent. Second. Aye. Motion and second for consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. 2019-322, an ordinance authorizing execution of a grant agreement, CHDO number 16-01, with Growth International Incorporated for the use of the city's home funds in an amount not to exceed $175,674 for the rehabilitation of property located at 833 North 7th Street through the Office of Planning and Economic Development. Is there a motion? Move to consent. Second. We've got a motion and a second for consent. Any discussion? Uh, All in favor? I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, can you tell me about, this is you, right? Sure. This is, so this is for affordable housing? Yes. Yes, it's uh, Pastor Doss's uh, group is, is doing uh, a housing projects, three bedroom uh, housing project. Yes, um, and they had done the one next door, and so they bought this particular property, and rehabilitating it. Okay. Um, can you can you t give me an accounting of how much money is in that fund currently? And you don't have to give it to me now. Okay. 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 In what fund? Uh, the ho the city's home fund. The home funds. Sure. Yeah. I can get that to you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, just just so you know, um, the pr the whole project is like two hundred twenty thousand. We're providing that 155 out of our home funds, and then we're using an additional 20 to make it, uh, you know, e more easily for them to manage an additional 20 out of out of uh, additional funds that we have that we okay. can do. So we'll get that. That's fine. Question on that, um, on the, the additional $20,000, mm -hmm. that's coming out of our corporate fund? No, that's not coming out of corporate fund. That's coming out of the... Um, Let's see, it's the 25% matching funds um, out of the home funds. We have to match a, a certain part of our funds each year. Usually we do it for our rehabilitation, um, other our HDLs, but we've decided to make this a little, work a little bit better. We went ahead and added an extra 20000 for this one. So this is ordinance 222? Uh, 322. 322. Mm -hmm. So is the fact sheet filled out incorrectly because... It refers to fund 001, $20,000, and 001 is our corporate fund for an expenditure. I'm not saying that, but if it is, I will check on that. It's, it's on the fact sheet. Do you have a copy of the fact I sheet? I don't have a copy of the fact sheet in front of me. So. Do, do others have a copy of the fact sheet? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to see the fact sheet, Bill? We do have, like I said, matching funds that we have to provide, so oh, yeah. That's so it may be corporate, yeah. 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 Uh, Mayor, I think it's a mistake to use corporate fund for this activity. We really got to reserve our corporate fund for police, fire, and public works, and our pensions, and to start using it for... Um, Matching funds is, I've never seen that take well, place. Well, HUD before. requires us to use 25% of the funds that they provide to us for this. So that's where we, where we get it. So it's a HUD requirement. Yes, oh, uh, Alderman. Kyle. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess... Uh, does it have to be corporate fund dollars, or can it be uh, from the developer or the other? I guess that's the question. Do they have to be city matching funds or private sector? Or do you know for sure? Or? Yeah, I don't know. It, you know, it, I just know that I that it's that the HUD requires us to match twenty five percent of, of our out. total amount. You want to put it on debate? Yes, I think it should go on debate. I've never seen sure. this before. Well, to be honest, the motion. Who who made their initial motion? Um, I think I did. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll withdraw it. Um, can I, I, I did have a question. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Um, if I could, could you just explain a little bit about what this, this housing project um, entails and what it's, what, what, we're, what results are we gonna get? It's in, it's, it's in Ennis Park and they took, taken a home, they bought this home, it's right next, they've got two homes right together and so they had taken one, rehabilitated it, um, and then they've taken this one and it's gonna be for uh, low income housing. So are these provided as, as um, lower income rental or is this for yes, ownership prop? Yes, Okay, rental. And, and who will be managing the properties? Growth International. And that's the? That's Pastor Doss's, Pastor Doss. yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Alderman mm -hmm. Proctor and then um, Alderman Donlin. Yeah, uh, to talk about this, it, Pastor Doss has done projects on 4th Street and I think it's kind of the same type of project realm. He's right. done great work there. Um, so I don't think there's any questions of you know, the type of property or the nature of the individuals coming or anything like that. Um, my question is, since it's in the Enos Park TIF, and so if people are uncomfortable using corporate fund dollars, can we use TIF dollars for it? We can check into that. And if that's a possibility, I'd be open to amending it for okay. that purpose. That's a good suggestion, Alderman Proctor. Thank you. So we've got a... Well, no, right now they're doing it under a CHOTO. Okay, so so they're Chodo, so that's under CDBG. Oh. So that they're Chodo, so they're our only Chodo. We have to have so many Chodo projects each year, and so they're doing it as a Chodo. Yeah, I would hesitate because we could lose our funding okay, if we how don't you get that obligate. <laughs> okay, get that answer for us. And yeah, yeah, let us know. yeah. Because right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then, if if not, can you provide a? a Another suggestion of where sure. the 20000 come from. Sure, Thanks. yeah, and, and we don't have to do it. That's the other thing. We were just trying to make it a little better, easier for them to, you know, meet. So okay, uh, we, we, no question we've got the 155 If you object to the additional 20 can you then ask we can them take then, that out. Is that a make it or break it for this project then for them? Can you ask them that? I don't think that? so. Okay, can you verify that? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I think so. Donald. Mr. Chair, that was my question, and if it's if corporate funds were to be used, there's probably a way to even reimburse the corporate fund from the TIF. I know it's all accounting mechanism, but if you could check it out. Right, sure, absolutely. Right. We had a motion withdrawn. Is there a motion for debate? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, I got a motion and second for debate. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. 2019-323, an ordinance accepting the lowest responsible bid and authorizing execution of contract number CS20-06-36 with Aramark Uniform and Career Apparel, LLC, for linen and uniform rental services for a three-year period from September 14, 2019 through September 30th, 2022, for a total contract amount not to exceed $260,000 for the Office of Budget and Management. With consent. Second. You got a motion and second for consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. And I believe that we will be skipping down to 2019-330 on the bottom of page 10. 2019-330, an ordinance to decrease the number of Class D local licenses by one for Manjabani LLC doing business as Manjabani located at 518 East Adams Street. Motion for consent. Second. No motion, second for consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Noted. Is there any unfinished business? From Mayor? Oh. Um, well, I think we're going to have a problem with Thursday night's meeting now if you're not going to be here. And if Alderwoman Simpson and Alderwoman Turner can't vote, then we're kind of in the same position we were in this evening. Or worse, because we have to get to six votes, correct? So, uh, I'm going to check with uh, Judge Maley. I did check with Judge Maley. He could be here uh, next Tuesday before the City Council if we prefer doing it that time at 5 o'clock. Can we just do a 5 o'clock on Tuesday? Is there anybody that's got a problem with 5 o'clock on Tuesday? We'll be here. Alderman Proctor won't be here. Well, call in, I guess. Let's call in parameters. Corporate council. Um, if you're, I mean, we have a rule that allows for electronic call-in. 
uh, participate via phone if it's under certain circumstances. So if you're uh, you know, traveling related to work or different things of that nature, then that's uh, proper to be able to do that. Not work related. Any other suggestions? You have to come up with I will, something. I will try. Uh, I can try to rearrange some things, but um, <clears throat> let you know tomorrow. But I'd really yeah. like to get this set. Other options Monday? How's Monday look? Available I mean, we Monday. Can... By available. Pro Mr. Alderman. I'm not going to be here Monday or Tuesday. All right. Sounds like Wednesday. <laughs> Friday the 19th? Well, fine. You will be. Okay. Open for any other suggestions? Either that or Wednesday next week. That's 24th. I think I'm available there. Alderman Proctor, are you in town on Wednesday or are you still traveling? Uh, I can be here. What time are you looking at? You want to do 5 o'clock good for everybody? 5 o'clock? Going once, twice? What's the day? The 20? It'd be 24th? the 24th. Yep. Question, do we know if Red Pat's going to be here? I assume. Or, I, guess I think we're going to run into problems potentially on any date we pick, but we had pre-set pre Thursday, July 18. Agree with you. We had set that, and so who, who cannot okay. attend a meeting that we had preset? It was, but nobody asked me if I could be there at that meeting, and I couldn't be there. So I didn't. We can go forward on Thursday. It's just going to be the same outcome. We're not going to get to the six votes. Question, Chair. Because yeah, do we have probably. to confer with the other attorneys, too, that they can be here when we can be here? Yeah. Well, well, it was preset. I mean, it was preset. Well, no, preset. I'm talking about what if, if we oh. move it other than Thursday. Yeah, I'd right. say do it Thursday. Right. Yeah, we want them to be here. Then That's let's right. just yeah. do it Thursday. You want to continue with it Thursday? I'll see if I can arrange, rearrange my schedule. Or can you call in? Um, He's retired. It's related to my work. <laughs> but it's related I'm to his work. I'm retired. <laughs> I'll, I'll see what I can do. Any other unfinished business? If I, if I may, oh, on Mayor? that point, I think Judge Melik has to leave about 6.15 that night, so I don't, is there flexibility in the time? Can we start at 4.30? No. Corporation Council? We can't start at 4.30. It's already posted, I believe, for 5, yes. so we would not be able to change that. Okay. Because of open meetings. Mm -hmm. We're just going to have to get through it, and, and I mean, so... I guess my question is uh, to corporate counsel, and I realize it's it's pertaining to the last meeting. But so going forward, what happens? You get a motion, you have a motion to accept certain things and not the other, or or, or what's the what's the intent of the of the meeting on Thursday? Are we going to go through every ballot and, and and or or what are we? What's what's our action going to be? Well, that, that is going to really uh, be dependent on what the council's intent is uh, or desire is. The uh, uh, other the parties uh, are already aware of the Thursday meeting, so I would expect them to be here. Uh, I would expect uh, Judge Melick to be here. So uh, we are now in the process of you've um, heard the arguments. The record is uh, effectively closed now. In other words, the record is what it is. You are now in the process of deliberation. A motion was made to affirm, as I understood it, a motion was made to affirm the recommendations or accept the recommendations of the hearing officer. So at the next meeting, it would be appropriate for discussion and a substitute or an additional motion. And I, I think that one of the questions, I think just to be of, try to be of some assistance here, is uh, are you wanting the uh, to have the um, ballots, the individual objections available to look at? Uh, we didn't ask for this meeting. The mayor did. We voted. Yeah, I can speak to that. Uh, one, I think 
all the aldermen, you know, should be voting on it. But uh, regarding my vote, I think the votes should count. I think one thing we don't want to do is disenfranchise the voters. So what I look at is the votes uh, that were in question three that had initials, um, and then the other ones are at the Mary Bryan home. I mean, if those individuals had their signatures on it, it's like any of us, I want it to count. Now, if, uh, if a judge makes a mistake, I go in, I present this corporation counsel, I go into the uh, polling place and I ask for it, and what if the judge misappropriates the initials, why should I be punished? The worst thing we can do is disenfranchise the voters. So if we believe, and both sides had good points, uh, because you know one pointed out the initials, the other one pointed out the signatures, what's the true intent of the voters? And the, I think the worst thing we could do is disenfranchise the voters. And that's what we don't want to do, because if we say every vote counts, let's make sure the voters' intent counts. That's, that's my point, so. Well, Gen Z. And it's not just one, I don't think uh, it's just one vote, you need six votes. So, you know, if we want to cast blame, really, there's no blame to be cast. Because really what we should be doing is uh, motivating the public to vote. And if this process doesn't do it, I don't know what will. Mr. Fulgenzi. Uh, the thing that I was not clear on, and I don't know if it was ever brought out, but is the location of the judge's uh, initials, is it statutory? Is it binding? It is not. Is there, a, is there something that dictates it, or is it a suggestive box? And I think I, that was the point I was trying to ask, um, Alderman, and I, I, I don't think that there is a, there is no rule that this, the, the initials be in a spot, but that they be on there. And that, that was my, that was kind of my question also. Do we, so but, it's- But is it statutory that they have to be in that particular location? It's in the guide. It's in the judge training guide. So, I mean, it, it, when you're trained as an election judge, it says initial in the box. No, it doesn't say that. It just says each ballot has to be initial. That's the statutory requirement. Each they ballot has to be an initial. initial. That's what's in the law. Yeah. Anything beyond that is, like a, a reminder to the judges, hey, you know, you got to initial this. Um, it's a helpful guide so that when you look at the ballots later on, you can always look to the same place to s look for the signature. But uh, I think it's a, it's a recommendation, it's a suggestion of where to put the initials. And it's a good suggestion and it's, it's useful. Um, I just want to throw out, and unless you got something else, Alderman Fulgenzi, I've got an idea. That, um, Go ahead. Well, I think Alderman Donlin was okay. asking to. I, just to point, just to clarify that I'm sure everybody knows this, but all the ballots, I mean, all the that are being challenged, everything that's being challenged is on the website. It's it website. Right. It's, you can print it off. It's been available as we've gone along, and the list has grown in the documents. So it's all there. So to, to say that oh, we, we want to wait until we get whatever and until it's passed out, it's 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 all been there. So we've we've had our time and. Alderman Fulgenzi, I, 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 I think uh, it was clear I asked the question really of both, both sides tonight. Uh, does the statute say that the initials have to be on that line? And if, if I'm telling you, if the answer would have been yes and, and that was the case, then the, the result probably would have been different. But that was clearly not the, not the case. So, anyway, whatever it's worth. Alderman McMenamin. The recommendation of the judge had a one third ballot difference. So it's just, it's fractional. It's very fractional. And I just want to throw something out there to the two candidates to see if they'd ever consider this. And, and also for our corporation council, if, if, if this would be appropriate under the laws that it's so close, whether we as a council, if the parties would agree to it, we do a coin toss. And, and we would agree to be bound by the coin toss and get this over with so that we don't have litigation after the city council election. Just, just an idea, you know, just for the two candidates to think about it. Um, it's, this is, you know, something to think about. Can I speak to that? Yeah. Uh, and Mayor, please oh. acknowledge me. Um, I'm not casting blame on anybody. I. I think everyone wants closure. I think these two candidates deserve closure. This has gone on long enough. Um, whoever's going to be sitting in that seat needs to know they're going to be sitting in that seat. And um, 
you know, I think we just need to move on from this election. Mm -hmm. That's all. Whether it's a coin toss or whether it's the vote we took and then they decide what they want to do from there, that's it. We took a vote tonight. I, and if I may, I, I, I think my biggest disappointment was we took one, we had one motion, and then once that was voted, as like the meeting was over. We should have kept going. We should have finished this tonight. I'm sorry. We should have finished this tonight. Well, that's, right, that's my point. But right now we've got a meeting scheduled Thursday. Thursday. Let's hold that meeting and see what that's comes the up. Plan. So, all right. Any other unfinished oh. business? Oh, oh I'm sorry, Ms. Simpson. Never mind. Okay. Any other unfinished business? Any new business? No. Um, and I spoke with you briefly. I guess this falls under new business. Um, I'd like to again bring up the topic of developing counts, uh, city policy around siting and locations of recreational marijuana distribution facilities. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of new to this. I'm, I'm new to this. So I, I would put out there that we should have a subcommittee of, of the city council. If it's more than three people, then obviously we would follow the Open Meetings Act. Um, Mr. Mayor, I, I would respectfully ask if we could have representatives from, from zoning, um, from your staff from zoning, economic development, um, licensure, so people who do those uh, as part of their daily business so that we can develop um, a more cohesive and, and policy around those the siting of those facilities that is an accurate um, representation of what our community wants. Um, so I'm not sure how that. Um, um, we are working on a, a draft ordinance now that you know, the city currently has a, a policy, an adopted policy for uh, medicinal marijuana. And we've done uh, a tremendous amount of research on the all, all of the ramifications of the law. So we will uh, have, a, if you will, a vehicle, uh, a ordinance uh, to for you to basically be able to review, make amendments to, and so on. So uh, we're pretty far down that path to have the draft done. Uh, and again, subject to you know council debate, you know review, and so on. But we and, can have a committee that. You know, takes a look at that as a starting point and go from there. And I'd like to ask, so what is, what is our timeline? Because I understand that the licenses at the state level, that application process, I believe, closes in October. It starts in October. Does it start? Yeah. Okay. So that's when, that's when they can open doors. Um, I, I just want to make sure. But medicinals can open doors and sell on, on January 1, but the licenses approval process will begin, I believe it's March. Of, uh, or maybe May no, for the if dispensaries. You have, no. if, you have a, if you have a medicinal license, you can sell no, recreationally. No, that begins correct. First. But for the non-medicinal uh, dispensaries, mm -hmm. their license approval won't take place till I believe it's either March or May. I think professional Ray is working on those report those. Anyway, what I'd like to say is I it's, I think it's important that we have this. We need to re respect the fact that this is a fairly big change for, for the city, and I want to make sure that we have, you know, we're looking at things like not just location, but advertisement and, and a very big comprehensive look so that, um, because the, the medicinal doesn't advertise in the same way that recreational is going to. So I, I, um, I appreciate that you've started the process. Thank you. Um, I would like to be involved in that, um, and, and I'd like to see something um, sooner rather than later so we can give our community a little sense of, of direction and what we're going with this and, and get feedback because I'm sure there's going to be um, a lot of input on that. Yeah, one area we'll do the feedback is the ward plan meeting, so yes. that should be interesting in September or October. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Be good. Th thanks. Um, all, all well, so, but I, I'm sorry, it's still, my question is still what's the timeline for the, a draft ordinance? Um, right now, I would say probably within the next two or three weeks. Okay. And um, keeping in mind that the way that the, the uh, law is constructed, the medicinal, the medicinal uh, locations automatically get a recreational. Yes, I and know that. And so the, um, we only have one medicinal location in Springfield. Uh, the other one, I think, is in Grandview, if my memory serves. Um, and so the immediate issue is, uh, uh, will be the question about uh, the uh, medicinal one and then whether or not, uh, for example, with those, you're allowed to have uh, the uh, 
uh, basically a, uh, I guess, a smoking parlor. You know, and, and that's, and that's another concept that's that's, that up, that's possible. Complex, that yes. So, <laughs> so uh, we're hoping to have a draft, but it's meant to be that a draft, you know, to go off of. And uh, the law is very uh, complex, has a lot of issues in it uh, that uh, are, it's going to be interesting to see how it all shakes out because the first set is just with the medicinal, but next year there will be the opportunity for more and more of the licenses. So, exactly. Alderman Proctor. Yeah, if there is a committee established to start reviewing these things, I'd like to serve on that with you because uh, Ward 5 is the one right now with the medical dispensary in it, and I think they are thinking about expanding there and doing some things. So. Uh, I'd like to take part in that. Okay, is there any other new business? The same topic. Um, I think it's a great idea to get this discussion going on the recreational marijuana. You know, some one village or city, Morton, has already voted as a city council to set up their zoning to exclude uh, recreational sales within their boundaries. And I understand that theoretically, the uh, the city even that has a medicinal dispensary could structure its zoning so that the medicinal sales could condi can, could continue, but not with the recreational sales. So I think maybe the sense of the council should express whether we want uh, our zoning to be structured in a way to accommodate recreational marijuana sales or not, um, before was, to, to give a direction to that committee that you're speaking about. I guess I was making an assumption there. Thank you. So then do we need to have a, a, a simple <laughs> ordinance just asking the question before you go, go to all the other links? I think, it, you know, and first decide whether we're going to do it. And if we do, then, then we go to the greater links. So. Any other new business? Um, I would like to announce that uh, Sangamon County Relay of Life is this Saturday from noon to 10 p.m. at the Illinois building at the State Fairgrounds. I also, it's my understanding, it's somebody's uh, birthday up here on the council. Yes, it is. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. Happy Thank birthday, you. John Fulgenzi. <laughs> You're right. Happy John. birthday. Happy birthday. 59. All right. Lucky devil, you got to spend it with us. Do you have any citizens re uh, request? We got one one person that signed up, I believe. Two. Two? Actually. Who are they? Uh, first one is Donald Martin. Don Martin. My name's Donald Martin, 904 Westview Drive. Um, my concern is with our water billing statements as far as we have an average water consumption per person. We have an average persons per household. Our water bill, if, if we could restructure or think about restructuring the itemized um, water detail sheet on our billing statement to where we could all make a concerted effort to conserve water. We're, right now, it's set up to where there's five units, I mean, it's in increments of five. The average water rule of thumb here at your offices are three units per person, which I can I understand that not everybody has three people in their household and everybody uses different amounts of water. Summertime, you're going to use a little bit more water. But you have rebates in, or, in place for water saving devices. We have put in a conscious effort for this new lake because we have an inadequate water supply. We would all be able to uh, make a monitor our own water if it was itemized on our billing statement in something other than f increments of five seeing as how our average water consumption is an increase of three per person. Um, <clears throat> I, I would just think it would be a lot easier. I'm, I'm trying to find out personally why we keep going, getting charged more money for extra water every single month when, uh, according to our bill, we are, and it, it doesn't even, we're not even able to achieve an average water usage. 
I, I know this is kind of confusing. I have a hard time explaining it to a few other people. Um, have you discussed this with uh, Ted Meckes? I've, I've already I've, I've had a talk with Ted, with we, and it, it's just it's just the itemized. I, I mean, I, I understand that we all use different amounts of water, and I know it's just a rule of thumb that we use three units of water per person. Um, but for some reason, you, we have five units of water. That's not increments of three. That's not even a, a full amount of water for two people per household before we start getting charged more money for extra water. Um, I, I just thought it would be easier if everything was reflective to what you guys, what you, we have all just downstairs, everybody has already decided that it's three units per person per month. <laughs> anyway, um, next item of business is uh, all of our main lawn maintenance. I've made it an, an a point to say that we have felt negligent in take keeping uh, city property mode. So I've taken upon myself to mow lawns um, all up and down Chatham Road from the golf course to the old uh, car wash that's on Chatham Monroe. I, I have receipts from dropping bags of uh, uh, waste off at Evans. I've, it's 21 bags is what I've taken out there and dropped off. I'm not going to bag them up and stick them out in front of my house and wait two weeks for them to come and get them. I know I've, I, I missed it today, so I had to go out and spend another $7. But I have pictures of trimming all the, all the bushes so that we can walk down the sidewalks because I run avidly all over the place. I, and if I can't run down the sidewalk, I'm going to take my time and go trim the bushes so that I can walk down the sidewalk without running through the yard. But I have to mow the yard first because not only can I can walk down the sidewalk, which if you'd like to see the pictures after the meeting, I'll show them to you all, um, because I can't, walk, I can't run down the sidewalk because the grass is so tall that, you know. So in any respect, I've been taking it in upon myself to mow grass and trim bushes so that we can all walk down the sidewalks and don't see two foot grass everywhere. And last and not these least, are private yards or are they in public? This is city property. This is right up and down Chatham Road. I, from the golf course uh, at Passfield Park all the way down to Quick and Easy, on, all on the east side of the road, all the way down through there. I have pictures that I've taken and receipts from me taking the bags and dropping them off at Evans. Um, but as, like I said, and, and it's not just in that area. There's all kinds of places in Ward 8 that the grass is just, you know, it's like we haven't even got, had any summer help that went out to um, mow any of these areas. I don't know how they got mowed in the past. Um, There's contracts. There's contractors that do it. If, if you can uh, get those, uh, those lots or, or wherever to it, either... Um, your alderman or to Nate Bottom, right? They'll, they'll well, I've, I've said so, I said about something to Joe and uh, Aaron a couple weeks ago, and nothing ever was done about it. So I, I just took it upon myself to do it. It's con consume, you know, Mr. Chair, community yes, service, whatever. Um, Don, I, I visibly saw you mowing at the corner, the, the northeast corner of Lawrence and Chatham Road, mm -hmm. and um, that is a private property there. That particular location. Um, and um, you did a beautiful job. I really commend you taking the initiative so that the, uh, there's free passage on the sidewalk. I think, generally speaking, our ordinances say that if on the parkways between the sidewalk and the curb, right. the, the private property owners are supposed to take care of that. So we can cite them for violations. As to the bushes, well, there's, um, there's some question about whether, and I've just been discussing this with our acting director of public works, there's some question about um, whether um, bushes that obstruct the sidewalk are the city responsibility or the, or the private party's responsibility. But those particular bushes that you were trimming there at the northeast corner of Lawrence and Chatham, those bushes were on private property. And so we can cite the property owner um, for failure to make the sidewalk clear. So um, I, you know, if you find other sites like that pertaining to private property, we have the, the tools to uh, f to get the homeowner to 
to, okay. to take care of their responsibilities. Well, I seen the fences running all the way down through there. I, I assume that was my assumption that it was a property line. So I figured anything on the west side of that fence was going to be city property. I, I, I just, I see everybody trying to walk through the grass. I run, I, I can't run on the sidewalk. I'm running through weeds that are knee high um, and everything of this nature. Right, thank you. And, um, and I don't know if there's any chance to get my $21 back, but hey, I thought I'd throw that out there. Um, and final, but not least, but uh, I appreciate the fact that you offer and supersede the ruling on the 24 hour notice just for last minute comments for the to address city council. Um, the Everybody volunteers to be in public office and for you to give us the opportunity to speak in, at the last minute, given the fact that there's not very many people here. Um, actually, I, I respect that decision and I hope that all of you would keep that in mind. I know you said something about not liking the fact that people speak without the 24 hour notice, but there's just not that many people that show up. And um, it's, it's nice to know that you take the, the extra couple minutes out of your day or out of the meetings time to uh, listen to us, to, to at least make us feel like we're involved with the city. Thank you, Alderman Simpson. Um, sir, I applaud you for wanting to see the, be the city look better mm -hmm. and taking it upon yourself to mow. But I would caution you and every other citizen not to do that. We need to follow the procedure. The right. procedure is, and you, it's great that you're our eyes and our ears because we can't be everywhere at all times. Exactly. But you need to contact, please contact your alderman. Your alderman will then work with Public Works because mm -hmm. that's just a phone call from, for, for, from her mm -hmm. to Public Works that, you know, the, the, the height of the grass is higher, eight, 10 feet, okay? Inches, I'm sorry. Um, and they will, they will go out within at least a day or so and cut those, those, those lots. So please, and, and I implore you, we can't have citizens however best intentioned, mm -hmm. doing the work that the city needs to be doing. Because again, we do have contractors that we pay that we, we send out. Right. And I, I'm working closely with Public Works to make sure that as I drive around, and I drive around every day, and I see lots, I make a note and I contact Public Works and they make sure that crews go out and do it. Again, I thank you. For, t for, for being a good, good citizen, but we can't have citizens taking it upon themselves to do it. Well, we, we have citizens to take it upon ourselves to make sure that they volunteer for public office. No. I mean, it, I, mean I, I understand Martin. completely. I just... Hold, hold on a second. I, I just, and I, I, I don't want to get into a debate about this. Um, right. I, I just want to tell you, first of all, I, I second um, all women since these comments in their entirety. Um, I just want to let you know that I was mistaken when you told me the, the section of Chatham Road that I thought you had said, and you just mentioned to me as after a meeting, and I was right. I was tired and going home. Yes. Um, so I, I went and looked at the wrong section of the road. And if I had, I, I clearly missed what you were talking about. Um, and yes, I I know you can't, you have emailed me, so please continue to do that, and I will absolutely um, get right with Public Works. Um, they've been extremely responsive. And I, under, I understand, and I will. Yeah, and I, I just, that was a miscommunication where I wasn't sure what part of Chatham Road you were talking about. Right. Or I thought you were talking about a different part. So in the future, um, absolutely let me know. An email is fabulous, and well, I will get to the, Public Works right away, and uh, we'll get that taken care of. In the meantime, I'm, if you could just let uh, Nate Bottom know where some of these locations are so he can go look, <laughs> and, and I appreciate you coming up. We're going to move on now. Well, I, I am, I'm not going to, I'm not a lazy person. I'm not going to let my neighborhoods and everywhere that I run around my neighborhood fall negligent or fall no, sort. Just, just email so, me and, and well, I, make I, your list right now. And I, I will out. email you from now on. Thank you I, very I, much. But I, I'm, you. I'm just advising, I'm, I'm going to make a concerted effort to help out with my neighborhoods. Well, we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your time. And who else do we have to speak? Alice Ramey. Wake up, Alice. 
I want to thank you guys for staying late to listen to A Radical Woman. And I appreciate all of you. Mayor, I'm a little upset with you, but I'll tell you later. That's okay. a change. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> new. Not really, not this time. Not the first time, right, Mayor? Nothing <laughs> new. I, uh, I was at uh, 9th and uh, Capitol, and I was behind a red car, and this car set through two stoplights. And they rolled down their window and blew out the smoke. And the smoke was marijuana. I really would like to know if you guys have the authority to say where they can smoke their free marijuana or whatever, or how they're going to take care of that, because that is very disturbing. And going up to Paradise, I ran across the same car and she was going 25 miles in a 90 mile zone, which is the miles. fast, yeah, this is a fast lane up there. One is a fast lane, middle lane, and third lane, okay? But, I mean, Casino. seriously, this is, the truckers were even honking at her to go. So when they do, you know there's something wrong, okay? And the other thing is I want to, sorry, uh, the other thing I want to talk about is my duck, <laughs> came back. <laughs> they must like my yard or they like the smell of my house or something. Anyway, it came back and I called the Illinois State Police and they said they'll send somebody out to pick it up. Well, when they picked it up, they told me she was pregnant. I didn't know that they have, what time they have cycles or whatever. And I said, well, if she wants to have them here, she can have them here, just watch her, okay? So the third thing is, that we've had a lot of shootings in popular place and just one about four, three houses from mine. Now, I don't know what you plan on doing with popular place. If it was mine, I'd burn it down and not no pretend to my house, but you know. But I think it's time we do something, okay? I know, Mary, that you think Doris Turner is doing a great job. She may be, and if she was here, I'd tell her because I'm not afraid of her like everybody else is, okay? But I do think that we need to have a little bit more control in popular place than what you have, and you don't have it. I mean, they still go through that little slot that goes right on into Livingston, right across that big lot at 1205. They still do that, but it's owned by somebody else. And then they still sit there and they'll park their car on Livingston and walk through there and go see their girl girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever the case may be, and come back. Or they go over there and pick up their dope and come back. They don't take their car in there, but they park right along Livingston. Okay. Yeah, the chief would be able to speak uh, about the enforcement, but uh, with regards to the new development group, they're going to start removing trees in the front. Um, I think this week, and it's for security purposes. Eventually, they'll have cameras, I believe, there. But it's going to be a total redo of, I don't know if you've seen the property on Oakdale and Livingston, changing from duplexes to uh, single-family homes for the most part. But there'll still be some duplexes, but there will be less density in that. So uh, anytime you like, uh, you probably could stop in the management office, and they probably could bring you up to uh, date on what the project schedule is going to be. I don't have to do that. I know I'm already. Well, very you good. Know. But that's anyway, going to start this week. The other thing I, I want to ask, okay, all the trees along the railroad, is that city property? Railroad property. Railroad. Uh, is it city property? Depends it depends. Okay. Then when is it time for the people that do that start? Is that in the Ernie Bank neighborhood? Bank mm -hmm. neighborhood? It's right behind my lot. There's poison oak and poison ivory, and there's all some other things growing in there I don't know. And my nephew says that he's not too sure what it is either because he says that he mows my lot. Yeah, we'll have Public Works go over there and take a look at it. Uh, that is city because property. Because I have first night coming up, 
mm -hmm. and right. I want it all cleaned out. Right. And also the neighbor that's on the north side and the neighbor on the left, right, south, south side mm -hmm. haven't taken care of their trees either. So I would like to have that taken care of because I got somebody that will do it for me. Okay, I have somebody who will do it for me. But if the city's going to do it, I'm, I feel just like um, yep. Miss Gale. Yeah, talk that, to Nate afterwards. Oh, Nate gets my phone calls very regularly. Good. Does he take them? He even knows my phone number very <laughs> That's well. <good. laughs> That's your man. That's but funny. I'm serious, Mayor. It's really important that we keep our city nice. It really is. Mm -hmm. And no matter our neighborhood, too, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to visualize going down Cook Street and uh, there is a bus picking up people in the middle of Cook Street when there is a, another corner there that they could stand and not be in the middle where somebody can hurt them. Okay, this is something that the Springfield Transit is a little bit unsure of what to do because I fought them too. But it's the idea that when you have a Cook Street from uh, excuse me, point of order. I think the five minutes is up. So I, I could you? I put don't care your if it's five minutes or not, Joe. But what we can well, do is if you. I mean, see, seriously. See, Juan, we're to back there. If you could give them the stretch that you're talking about on Cook Street, then we'll get with Springfield Mass Transit District and it needs notify to be them that because in the middle be of the street is not right. Yeah, we'll ask them. Thank you. But again, that's a different entity, so. Okay, we'll pass I know along. that, but I want you to remember that. Yeah, we'll pass along. Thank Tell, you. Okay, bye. Do we have a need for executive session? Uh, do I have a motion? So move. Second. Oh, one more. Oh. It's about the... Uh, yes. All right. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Langfelder and all of the aldermen. Thank you for mentioning about Relay for Life, Alderman Honorer. Um, I just wanted to let you know that from 10 to 12 will be a survivor brunch that's open to everyone before the Relay for Walk, Life Walk begins. So if you know any survivors, they can bring two caregivers with them as well. And it will be at the fairgrounds at the Illinois building. All right, thank you thank very you. much. Thank Good you. luck with your event. Thanks for staying, Simona. <laughs> any, anyone else? Do we have a motion so to adjourn? Second. We adjourn.